On this week's episode of A Drier Dose of Disney, Jared discusses the new Tron ride at Magic Kingdom in Orlando. Welcome to this week's episode of A Dryer Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dreyer, and today we are going over to Tron at Magic Kingdom. We're going to be talking about the new Tron light cycle ride. And last week we talked about Guardians of the Galaxy and how that one all works. Today we'll be doing the same with Tron. And you can see again, if you're watching us on YouTube, we are filming in a new location. We are at the Dryer Dose of Disney condo in Orlando, and this is our living room here. So with this shot here, you can see obviously the cool um, artwork that we have from the Haunted Mansion over at Magic Kingdom. And we've got artwork all throughout this condo. And we will be doing a special episode on the artwork here in the next couple of weeks. So you're definitely going to want to come check that out because we love the Disney art and we have it up everywhere here at the Dryer Dose of Disney condo. So we'll be taking you through all that and showing you some of the different pieces that we have around and why we love them and why we decided to pick those out. So definitely you're going to want to tune into that episode. But before we get started today talking about Tron, I do want to ask wherever you're listening to us at, or if you're watching us on the video format on YouTube, go ahead and click that pause button and click subscribe down there. So that way you're going to get this content delivered into your inbox each and every single week. And you're going to stay in tune with all the latest tips and tricks at the Disney and Universal Parks. And then second, if you find any tips or tricks that save you time or money, we do ask that you click uh, the button there for Patreon down in our links below and become a subscriber there. That way, if you throw us a couple of dollars over at Patreon or become a regular subscriber, you're the ones that keep this podcast going. And we do appreciate all of our subscribers over at Patreon. Now, if you saw last week, you saw that I was wearing a new RSVLTS shirt. I'm wearing another one today. This is a new Disney shirt. This one has all the different characters drawn on it. And again, I don't get paid for talking about RSV LTS or their shirts. Uh, I just absolutely love them. And there are so many cool designs. I got this one for Father's Day. And so I'm wearing this on this episode today as we talk about Tron and the Magic Kingdom. And so I definitely encourage you to go check out their stuff. They're great shirts, really breathable. And they're the ones that I'll be wearing to the parks uh, more often now that we go. Again, we're down in Orlando for the majority of the summer in 2023. And so we'll keep bringing you different episodes and talking about the great things that happen down here in Orlando. And we'll also be covering the West Coast anytime that we have an opportunity. But today we're going to be talking about Tron Light Cycles. And this is a ride that I had a chance to ride for the first time on Monday this week. So just a few days ago. And it was a great ride. It was a lot of fun. But I want to talk to you a little bit about how the ride works and a little bit of the history so that you know, starting out with obviously what is Tron? If you have not ever seen the movie Tron or the uh, reboot of it with Tron Legacy just a few years ago, this was a Disney movie that came out in the early 80s where a computer programmer and his name's Glenn, and he created this program of this world and was able to enter the world. And by going in there, he had this vision that programs were uh, like cars on a highway. And so when he went in there, he saw that the programs were actually battling for their lives and battling it out in different games. And there were people trying to take over, basically similar to AI. And it was a really groundbreaking movie as far as technology is concerned, as they had these really cool suits with all the different neon lights on them. And then fast forward with Tron Legacy, it's his son. Kevin Flynn has now disappeared and his son is looking for him and finds him back in the grid. And so that's a really cool movie. Absolutely love it. It's a lot of fun. It's got some great visual effects. It's got some great action scenes, and it's also available in 3D. So if you've not seen a 3D movie, it's a great one to start with just because they have some great scenes on the actual light cycles, which is then what they created the ride after. So they started the ride out in Tokyo at uh, the Disney campus out in Tokyo, and it had great reviews out there. And of course, the people in Japan absolutely love Tron and love that computer side of it. So they really wanted a Tron ride out there and they got it through this roller coaster, which is the uh, light cycle ride. And then uh, people wanted it out here in the United States. So after it was built in Tokyo, people in the United States started asking for it. And so they built it out here in Orlando at Magic Kingdom. And it is now open and it is a great ride. It's a roller coaster. It's not super intense. We'll talk about that here in just a few minutes, but it is just a lot of fun and it's right in line with the movie. 
basically what I want to start with those, I want to talk to you about how you can ride the ride and then what the ride is as you go through the queue and you do the lockers, then getting on the ride and then the full ride experience there. So starting out to get queued up for it, it is a part of the virtual queue. We did talk about this on the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind episode. And this is also relevant for any future new rides that Disney adds as they will put them through the virtual queue. And the way that works is you do want to have your entire group and party built into your My Disney Experience mobile app so that you can reserve a spot in the virtual queue, which has to be done the day that you're going to that park. You can't reserve ahead of time like you can the restaurants. You actually have to reserve it that day. The reservation window is open at 7 a.m. and at 1 p.m. And we recommend, obviously, you want to do the 7 a.m. one so that way you have your reservation ready to go for the day. But the way that we do it, is I recommend at least a, a day or two before go into the My Disney Experience mobile app. You're going to go to your own profile and you're going to look at your friends and family list. And you want to make sure that everyone in your party that you're with is listed on your friends and family list. If they are not, you can go through and do the linking by using the QR codes and make sure that you get them linked in. If they're still not showing, I encourage you to go to guest services at any Disney hotel, resort, any of the parks or at Disney Springs. And since we live off-site and we're not obviously staying on property at Disney, for us, the most convenient is for us to go to Disney Springs. And uh, you can head over to, there's two places. There is the ticket office uh, that can help you with some ticket stuff, but they also have guest services located just about 100 yards away from there that can handle everything else, including the My Disney Experience mobile app. What we've seen happen is you may have a kid that was being managed by the parents and now that the kid is old enough, they have their own version of the app and it doesn't quite work and you may not see them in there in the app anymore. So that's a great time to go to the uh, guest services over there at Disney Springs, let them know what's going on. And it just takes them a few clicks and they will get that all fixed for you and get everything linked back up. And they will make sure that your whole group is listed in your friends and family list because that is crucial. That needs to happen before the day that you're going to go to the park. Then the day of the park, I would encourage you to get up at least 10 minutes early. So about 6.50, you're going to go into the app. You're going to go through the button where it says join the virtual queue, which is on the first page. And when you get in there, you're going to want to click your entire party that's going to be with you in the park that day. Now, if you have somebody who may not want to ride the ride, I do encourage you still click them, get them included in that reservation. And if they don't ride, it doesn't hurt anything. But if you ever leave them off and then they decide later that they want to ride, they won't be able to. So I say get everyone in there, even all the little kids and grandma, and you're going to create that whole list. And then you're going to click the button at the bottom to join the virtual queue. It'll take you then to a holding screen that you can continue to refresh until 7 a.m. And right at 7 a.m., that button's going to pop up in there that says join the virtual queue. I recommend you count it down and watch it. And right at 7, you're going to click that refresh and then you're going to join the virtual queue. If you do that right away, chances are you're going to have a decent boarding group number is what they call it. And I've seen boarding groups from the mid-teens all the way up over 100. And so hopefully you're going to be somewhere in that first half of the day where you're in the 20 to 50 range. And then from there, when you go to the parks, uh, it'll call boarding groups throughout the day and you're going to get a notification when it's time for you guys to go ride the ride, which is really cool. I can tell you that our last time that we went Roadtron, we were boarding group 21. That was called before rope drop even happened. So we were able to rope drop the Tron ride and nobody was in line, which was really nice. So we were able to walk right on. I encourage you guys, as you look at it, it tells tell you how long until your group should be called back. Do not fret when you see three, four, five hours because that's from 7 a.m. May say you're five hours out, but at 7 a.m. that would mean about noon is more than likely when your time would be called. For us, it said three hours at 7 a.m., that'd be 10 a.m., and we were called before nine. So it is gonna be a lot quicker than they usually show, most of the time, provided that there are no breakdowns and that the ride is operating smoothly. We have had as high as over 100. When we did Rise of the Resistance, I believe we were like 120 or something like that, and we were still able to get on that day that was very late in the day. So do be warned that if you're above 100, it's gonna usually be towards the later afternoon. Now, let's say at 9 a.m. you click in and you see that there are no more times available. What do you do then? You have another slot at 1 p.m. and you have to have your entire party in the park. They have to be through the turnstiles and checked into the park to be counted as part of that reservation. But you can do it again at 1. And again, I would encourage you to do it right at 1 on the nose. And you have an, that opportunity to get a boarding group at that point in time. 
The best part about that is it is before the park hoppers are able to get into the park at 2 p.m. Uh, so it's only for people dedicated to that park that day that got in and have their whole party in there. So you should be able to get it at 1 p.m. I've never heard of anyone who couldn't get it at either time. And so it's very rare anything like that would ever happen. Most people do get it at 7, but you do have a fallback at 1. Worst case, if you missed both or maybe the timing was off, you can purchase individual lightning lanes for it. Those are about $20 a piece per person, but that pretty much guarantees you the ride and guarantees the opportunity to go do Tron. So and it's up to you if, the, if it's worth it, or you can even do both. You can do the uh, virtual queue for free. You can go ride it. If you decide you love it, you can then pay to do the lightning lane at a later point during the day. So that's always a option for you as well and an advantage of having two ways to ride it. So that's how uh, the virtual queue works. Now, let's say uh, you're in, you're ready to go. Your group has been called. You have about an hour then uh, window to get over there and to go ride it. Uh, you're going to walk all the way back into Tomorrowland. It's over by Space Mountain. Uh, you're going to go up a little bit of a ramp there towards the top. It is outdoors, but it is covered. The queue uh, does do both indoors and outdoors. But when we went up there, like I said, we were able to walk right on. So we didn't see it get backed up. I can tell you from Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, in the middle of the day when it's full, the wait's about 20 minutes long or so. And that's where they try to meter that virtual queue towards is about 15 to 20 minutes of a wait. So if you're middle of the day, that's probably what I would expect, which should be inside. So you're going to go inside. And of course, the queuing is designed much like the grid. It's a lot of black with the blue neon highlights. It is a little bit darker in there. So do be prepared for that when you go in, meaning that if it's really bright outside, you may need a minute or so for your eyes to adjust properly so that you can see where you're going. It is more well lit than Space Mountain. So if you've been through Space Mountain in the middle of that queue there, it gets very dark in the middle and it's impossible to see your way through there, if, especially if you just walked in from outside. With Tron, they do have the blue ne neon lights, which helps quite a bit. When you're going through there, of course, they show the pictures of the light cycles. You're going to be on blue team. And of course, all of the cars are the blue color, which is really cool. But when you get through most of the queue, you're going to find yourself at a set of lockers. And this is the first Disney ride to have lockers. And they took a page out of the book of Universal Studios and the Velocicoaster by having a set of lockers that have two sides. This is a huge advantage, meaning that you can go through on the way in. You're going to be selecting your locker. You're going to scan into a locker using your key or using your magic band or some similar device. And once you scan in, uh, that locker will open. You can put all your items into the locker. And then once you come off the ride, you're going to actually be on the other side of that wall, that same locker set, and you're going to pull yourself stuff out from the other side. But that's a really cool feature. So you're not getting clustered back into the same room with everyone else. It is a different experience going through on the way in as versus coming out. And then all the lockers that are available are lit up on the way in. And then when you're coming out, the ones that are lit up are the ones that have stuff in them. You do want to make sure that you remember your locker number. Of course, you're going to be carrying that key with you or a magic band if you have that. Everything else should go inside the locker. So be mindful of that. If you're going to have a key, make sure you have somebody who has a pocket that they can hold it in, maybe a zipper pocket so that you don't lose that key. And then the Disney cast members also have uh, temporary keys that you can use. So basically, they give you a disposable little card you can use and uh, you can get through and do it that way as well. I will tell you our, I can do this all day tip of the day is that we found when we tried to use our Apple watches and our iPhones uh, with the mobile wallet on there, those tickets did not work with the lockers. We actually had to pull out physical plastic cards to get those to work. And so uh, luckily my daughter had hers on her. And so we used her key to get in. So I will recommend that if you're planning to go in there and use the lockers, it's easier if you have the actual plastic physical card with you or a magic band. We've heard that those two work really well. I can tell you, like I said, the Apple Watch and the mobile wallet did not work as well. And maybe they do work. I can tell you, we both tried our devices. Neither one of them worked. So maybe we were doing something wrong there. But at the end of the day, it's easier with a key or with a magic band. But once you go through there, you're going to come down into the queuing for the ride. It's very straightforward. But this is a very different roller coaster, meaning you're not going to get in and sit on a bench or in a seat like normal. This is one you're going to get in and you're actually going to be leaning forward and laying on your stomach. So that is a very different experience, uh, getting used to that and riding a roller coaster that way. But when you look at it, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a motorcycle. You do have to get your leg over 
the motorcycle. So if you have a problem lifting your leg that high or are not good getting off or on a bike, do know that is the experience that you're going to encounter there. Uh, you do have to swing your leg over the bike. You're going to sit on uh, it to an extent, but mostly you're going to lean forward, get your legs into the leg apparatus there, and then you're going to reach up and grab the handlebars. And when you do, it tells you to pull them back towards you, which then secures the safety equipment behind your back. So when you pull it forward, there's a plate that comes up behind you that's going to hold you into place. This is fairly similar to Flight of Passage over at Animal Kingdom, the Avatar ride, where you're getting on a motorcycle, but they put the restraints in place for you. On this one, you're going to pull the handlebars, and it's going to bring it up behind you in that case. From there, it's a great ride. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much of it. They're going to uh, launch you, and, and it goes pretty quick outside and then back inside. And then you go through the grid and you are going to be going through different gates on your light cycle. From there, obviously you come off and we already talked about the lockers and how to retrieve your stuff. I will tell you just my honest review. It's a good ride. It's a fast ride. It's not too long. It's over pretty quickly. You probably won't get as motion sick on this as you would say Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, but they're not too terribly different except for the, obviously the cars don't uh, turn as you go through the ride. The roller coasters are pretty similar as far as intensity, so it's not too different from that, but it is a lot of fun. Now, I will give one point of criticism, and that is that Disney could have done more with Tron, meaning when you go through and ride the actual ride, you are in a huge dark warehouse, just like you are with Guardians of the Galaxy. I think that they could have loaded it with the different huge LED screens, and they could have played out the whole race a little bit more, meaning they could have had the other light cycles in there racing against you all digitally on the board, maybe trying to cut you off right before you drop or trying to put their path in front of you, which is how you lose in the light cycle race game. So I think there was a lot of opportunity for them to kick this up to the next level a little bit, and maybe they will at some point in the future. It was just a little bit disappointing that they didn't. It felt a lot like the rock and roller coaster, the Aerosmith roller coaster, when you were in there with a lot of the neon lights and you're just going through all these gates as you go through where they could have made it a much more interactive experience than what they did. But all in all, it was a fun roller coaster. I will definitely ride it again pretty much every single time that I go. I will definitely make it an uh, opportunity to go uh, ride that ride. I do love Tron. I think it's a, a very fun movie. I think the ride was good. And I love the music from the reboot that they did a few years ago with uh, Daft Punk doing all the music. And they do have that playing in there. So that's a lot of fun, too. So that's our review of the Tron Light Cycle ride over at Magic Kingdom. We hope that you have a very magical week as you're planning your next vacation. And we will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.